Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Liberate Lunations. My name is Eleonora and today we're going to be talking about the full moon in Virgo that occurs on March 18th with its peak time of 12.17 a.m. for Pacific Standard Time. We have lots of planets in Pisces, um, Sun, Mercury, Jupiter, Neptune, um, and honestly, these lunations to start the year have been no joke. So sit tight, get comfortable, let's get into it. First up, we have the moon in Virgo, trine Pluto in Capricorn, and I kind of dig this for a good release, um, especially an emotional release, but I personally, personally would do it private or with a trusted circle versus just any kind of ritual. Um, the reason being is that Pluto sometimes is good at taking something small and making it super viral and big and for, for no reason sometimes. Um, so our emotions could be kind of walking a very thin line right now. So best to really take care of yourself, put yourself first, um, get into a situation where you know you'll be safe and you can release without having to worry that you're hurting anybody and unintentionally in the process. Next up, we do have Mars Venus conjunction in Aquarius. Um, now the past new moon and then the full moon before that we had mars venus conjunctions in capricorn so it'll be nice to see the difference between having the full moon in leo with that mars venus conjunction in capricorn and now we're having a full moon in virgo with this mars venus conjunction in aquarius so this is this to me is like quirky, spicy, weird, spicy, like intellectually stimulating and mind opening spicy. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I think it'll help us tap into those mind spaces that we need to experience new things for ourselves. Um, like, what do you really want to do that will be both creative, fun, and will make you feel like kind of a weight has been lifted off? Like you're releasing through these activities that you're engaging in and taking part of. So sometimes when people think about Virgo energy, they think rigid, like earth over analyzing, like super OCD, etc. But they also forget that Virgo is a very mercurial and mutable sign. So Virgo has the ability to be the most flexible out of the earth signs, in my opinion, at least. So it's able to dive head first deep into anything it sets its mind to so take advantage of that moon energy to get into these situations and these activities that will help release and get any gunk out basically emotional gunk that you have inside next up we do have mercury in pisces sextile uranus in taurus so i think this aspect can support exploring different ways to express ourselves especially with mercury involved in there and in a watery emotional sign like Pisces um, so we can express like our thoughts or feelings in a way that's unconventional or in a new way that we haven't explored before um, and this can also indicate that communication patterns around you might be disruptive might be kind of shocking there can be some surprises coming up um, somebody talking to you completely differently, um, dynamics switching up and changing. So just keep that in mind. But the thing is, this is a sextile. So not only is one of the weaker aspects of the harmonious aspects, but it's also a harmonious aspect. So it's it's a good, they're, they're there to support each other. To wrap up, we do have Venus in Aquarius, square Uranus in Taurus. And as we know, anything Uranus is going to be disruptive of some sort. Um, and it's going to put kind of like a stability test on these planets that are being aspected. So in this case, we have an aspect of tension between Venus and Uranus. So that means that things are being put to the test, like relationships, values, money, um, how you value yourself and how you value others. So the things I want you to ask right now is, are the relationships that you're in, not only romantically, but friendships, partnerships, business, whatever it is, are these meeting your needs and expectations? Are you showing up for other people as much as they're showing up for you? And are other people showing up for you as much as you're showing up for them? Um, really try to put yourself in a perspective um, and really 
try to think of the things that need to change in order to succeed. Um, I think the important thing with this aspect is an open mind more than anything and not being defensive about things that might be brought up to your attention. Um, Cause it might have to do with other people too. Other people might be like, yo, you're not meeting my expectations. And then instead of just being like, well, fuck that, trying to have a conversation of like, okay, how can I, how can I be there for you? But at the same time, respecting your boundaries and respecting your value and respecting what you will and won't do in certain situations. All right, next up, we're gonna pull a card, a Cardi card um, for this full moon in a Virgo, um, a message, something we need to hear. Ah! So, okay, so we have Mercury, Pluto, Hygieia, and the last quarter moon. So we have a lot going on here. Um, let's start with the first one, Mercury. Communication. You really need to speak your mind. You really need to use your voice and your mind to kind of like get everything out. Um, just get it out. Whether it's journaling, whether you're podcasting by yourself, whether you're venting to your therapist, venting to a friend, venting to a stranger, just get it out okay but keep in mind that first aspect with the moon and virgo just get it out in a healthy supportive way next pluto we know they be dramatic so pluto also wants you to concentrate on the power of transformation on how something so simple and so little like the the tiniest change to your routine or change to your energy or or change that you make to your life can have a huge effect it can really be deeply transformational so don't be afraid to to make it like do baby steps at a time don't feel like you have to do this whole huge thing it's like i have to release so much it's like even if you release one tiny thing i guarantee you that's gonna make a huge change in your life next Hygieia. I don't really know much about asteroids, but I do remember talking about her um, a few lunations back. And this is basically the asteroid of health. Check in with yourself. Are you healthy? Not only physically, but emotionally. You gotta keep in check with that. You gotta keep cleansing emotionally, spiritually, physically, in every dimension possible. Pay attention to that right now. Pay attention to your routines. If you need to do something to change to make yourself feel better, whether again, that's emotional or physical, I think this is the time to do it. And lastly, we have the last quarter moon, which is the last quarter of the moon phases, which means things are shedding, things are being let go, which is going to be what's going to happen after this full moon. Um, the shedding process is going to start during the full moon. You're going to put those intentions of what you want to let go of and not have come back and then in the last quarter moon that's when all is going to happen all these things that you've been wanting to get rid of are going to start shedding so just focus on that focus on what you want to let go of so for crystals to recommend this time around i'm going to recommend blue kyanite because not only is a great throw chakra stone but it can give you the courage to speak up and to do it from a place of clarity. It encourages conscious thinking and invite us to explore kind of an elevated sense of self. For events to recommend, make sure to check the description box down below for events happening for this full moon in Virgo. All right, you guys, that is it for this full moon in Virgo. Um, it's happening on March 18th. Wow, wow, wow. Let me know how you're feeling. Let me know what you're releasing this Virgo full moon. We wanna know how you're doing. Other than that, I hope you're healthy. I hope you're happy. And um, yeah, thank you for being here. I'm sending all of you much, much love and many, many blessings and have an amazing full moon. Energy healing is a form of therapy that helps uh, treat the person on all levels of their life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, etherically, which is energetically and physically. I'm energy, this chair is energy, 
Everything around us is energy. Uh, when we you receive an energy healing session, it's a transmission of life force. There are a lot of techniques that we can use to balance the energy field. Uh, regardless of the practitioner, there are certain ways in which each of us can connect to and help the client um, rebalance whatever it is that's going on in their energy field that is creating dis-ease or discomfort in their lives. We work with you both in person and remote. Energy healing is good for everything. So you can use it to manifest something, you can use it to uh, treat a, an ailment, whether it's something physical, mental, emotional. And we cleanse your chakras, balance you, clear out stress, physical issues, worry, fear, trauma, anxiety. Release cords, release things in your life or in your body temple that are keeping you from moving forward. I normally suggest that people get an energy healing whenever they feel that they need it. A healing energy work should be done on a regular basis, like taking a shower. If you're watching this and it crosses your mind, hmm, out of curiosity, get a healing. You're being called to it. 